Hello, this is Philip Beadle from Holochain, and today I'd like to show you a demonstration of our Identity Manager and also hooked up and integrated with our peer chat system. So no doubt you're aware that Holochain is very much an agent-centric based uh, project and one of the great things that, about that is it gives you back your agency. And if you think about the way that you log into websites and things like that at the moment, all of that information that you put in is held by those parties who've asked for that information, not by you, which means you've lost control of it and basically they own it because if you've ever read the terms and conditions on these things, they're pretty onerous. And uh, also if you throw into the mix the OAuth services like Facebook, you know, log in with Google, etc., cetera, um, they're even more insidious because they actually take a lot more data than um, just your name. They actually log everywhere that you go on the internet and all this kind of stuff. So one of the things that we wanted to do at Holochain was give you back the ability to manage your own data and look after your own identity. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. So we have this concept of personas and profiles where a persona is, you know, like a, you have like a work persona and a personal persona, maybe a different persona with your friends. And those fields, that's the data that you store. And then when a project or a, an application wants to you to fill out a profile, you don't have to actually fill out the form because you've already got all that information that you've stored and you're just allowing that application to map to your data. So you don't actually give them the data in most cases, just a, a way to map to it. So I'll show you how all that works right now. So here we have the uh, um, basic setup for Identity Manager. At the top we have our different personas and you can see we've got one there called default. And I'll just show you how to add a persona. The idea is, is that you um, give it a name and then add some different fields in here. So I'm going to use, uh, let's call it public, and we'll give it some field names. So if we call it first name, and let's say we'll put in here uh, Phil's public name, and we'll add another field, last name. Now I've used this particular typing of um, with the underscores so that um, when other forms are using the same fields, such as you know, say an application wants to know my first name, if they use the same structure of first underscore name, then that profile will automatically get filled out. And I'll show you how all that works in a minute. So let's create this persona. You can see that was fairly simple. Now, if we go back to the uh, main page, you'll see down here, we actually have an example profile so that I can demonstrate how this works. So if I click on here, you can see that this particular profile is asking for my handle and a last name and a first name. And you can see that it's automatically mapped and found that in my public persona, even though this is set to default, my public persona, it found a field called last name and it put it in there and it also added a one in called first name. Now let's say I don't really wanna use that. Uh, I wanna call it something else. So we'll just call it, um, just add something on the end so that um, we can find it and if I you can see now that it's switched to default last name so what's going to happen is it's going to add this field that it couldn't find in an existing persona into the default persona and if we do say profile and go back to the main page and if we look in the default profile now you'll see we now have this new field added in so gives you really good control over your data and it's also really simple for applications to um, send profiles. So uh, rather than set up a whole bunch of profiles, um, uh, personas, sorry, I'm going to use some automation and we're going to use a bit of UI automation to um, add in some profiles for pers uh, personal, work and friends with some various different fields of uh, values in the same field name so that I can demonstrate how that works as well. All right, so that's all done. So if we go back to the main page, we now see I've got a bunch of different um, personas in here. And I just want to switch back to the profile and explain the difference between some of these fields. Now you'll see here we have this save. And what that means is that this field handle used by this app called example app 
they need to actually store the handle in their DHT so that they can access it really quickly. And, you know, that kind of makes sense in a, in a chat environment, right? Because, like, you don't want to be having to pass that handle from your personal data store every time somebody else wants to see that you wrote a, um, that you wrote a post. However, something like first name and last name are not really necessary all the time, so that's actually stored here, and that's what's called a display field, which means that this data, like Beetle new field, is not stored in the app. It's actually stored in my personal uh, profile manager here, and if that application wants to use it, then they need to make a request. And I'm going to show you how that works with the uh, chat system in a minute. Okay, so we've now got some personas and let's go and use the, the new chat app. So if I refresh this, what's going to happen is it looks to see if I have a profile in the chat app and the first time around it's going to find I don't have that. It's then going to send a profile request to my personal identity manager and then redirect to that so that I can fill out the form. So let's see how that works. Let's refresh here. There you go, it does a refresh back to Identity Manager. And now we have a profile for Holochain Peer Chat. And you can see that it found my handle in my friends persona, it found an avatar in friends, and it found a full name in my personal one. Now this is actually for my uh, work chat, so I'd like to use a different name. So if I choose work as a uh, persona, you can now see that it's selected the name out of my work persona, which is nice. So now it, I've now got the same convenience of using a thing like login with Facebook, except that I control the data. So if we go save here, we'll go back to uh, the chat, and now you can see that it's got my avatar and my name. So I've also got two, um, I've got two uh, agents running. So if we do the same thing over here, now this agent has never used Holochain before, so none of the fields are there. So if we type in uh, Art's handle and we'll drop his avatar in here and we'll say Arthur Brock and save that profile. We'll go back to the chat and that'll refresh and then I can show you Arthur's identity manager now. I'll refresh this page and you can see that He's now got this Holochain peer chat, which was sent through, which we just saw. And if we now look in the default persona, you'll see those fields were added to that default persona. So in future, when Art uses another Holochain app and needs to provide a profile, that data will be there for him. All right, so let's create a room. Now let's, uh, let's call it uh, announcements and we'll create that room. And you can see there's going to be a message stream here. Now, you'll see that in, in my instance, that hasn't come up. Now I'm going to do a refresh and that's going to pull the information back. And I've done that on purpose because I want to show you how the instant messaging works as well. So if we're both in the same group now, and I say, uh, Holochain rocks. And as soon as I send this message, you'll see it turn up in Arthur's browser instantly like that. And we can do it backwards as well. And so that's instant. So you can see that there's, um, we're not, you don't have to do refreshes now. And that's because we're using some of the Holochain features like um, sending between nodes and also receive and also a new one called emit, which will send the message back up the WebSocket to the browser. So you get this nice interactive UI. Now, we were talking before about personas and profiles and not being able to, and, and not wanting to um, put all our data into the app. And what we did put in the app was the, uh, the avatar and the uh, handle, which you can see here in this list. But let's say I'm in this room and I'd really like to figure out who is this person filter. So I can, when I click on here, it will actually go and get this person's full name. Now what happened there was that Arthur's browser sent a message to uh, his Holochain instance. That then sent a message to my Holochain instance using the Holochain peer-to-peer -peer, um, communication. When it hit my node, it then bridged into my personas and profile or into my identity manager. 
And what that what bridging means is that I'm running Holochain, uh, I'm running the chat and also the identity manager. And the identity manager has been allowed to be accessed by the chat so that the chat can actually get temporary access to my data, like Philip James Beetle, but that data is still stored in my personal uh, per per uh, my personal identity manager. So there we go. There's, um, that shows you how to do identity management, how we're using uh, integrating into HAPS. It also demonstrates how to do node-to-node -node communication. And uh, thank you very much.